Welcome to the PropTech Podcast. It's Kylie Davis here, and I'm delighted to be your host as we explore the brave new world where technology and real estate and property collide. I passionately believe we need to create and grow a sense of community between the innovators and real estate agents and property owners, and sharing our stories is a great way to do that. The aim of each episode is to introduce listeners to a prop tech innovator who is pushing the boundaries of what's possible and to explore the issues and challenges raised by the tech and how they can create amazing property experiences. And my guest this week is Rachel Kidwell from TC Pinpoint, a prop tech that anyone working in retail real estate is going to find super fascinating. Rachel is an inspiring prop tech entrepreneur who has used the pain she used to experience as a tenancy coordinator and fit out manager in the retail sector to found TC Pinpoint, a cloud-based collaboration tool that brings all the stakeholders involved in the retail tenancy delivery process into one platform. Now there's a lot of people involved in getting a new store open. From landlords and building engineers and facility managers to the shop designer, fit out and tradespeople, and that's just a few. And after such a turbulent time in retail over the past few years, the industry is due for some good news and ways to save. TC Pinpoint was part of the Realtech X 2020 program with the Taronga Group. And Rachel is also an inspiring female entrepreneur, a co-founder of PropTech South Australia, an activator with She EO, and a member of the SA Future Trends and Innovations Committee of the PropTech Council of Australia. Rachel Kidwell, welcome to the PropTech podcast. Thanks, Kylie. It's great to be here. Now, we it, we have spent months trying to can it coordinate our diaries to come together. So it's great to finally have you here. And I'm really looking forward to learning more about TC Pinpoint. But tell me, we kick off always, what's the elevator pitch for TC Pinpoint? TC Pinpoint provides transparency across the lease to open process for retail landlords, effectively okay. creating one version of the truth. Okay, so so what is that lack of transparency? What's the problem that you're solving? Mm, so my background is as a retail tenancy coordinator. So mm-hmm. I used to deliver retail projects for large landlords. Mm-hmm. And the problem that I experienced was exactly that lack of transparency. Everybody would come to the table with their own version of the truth, their own Excel spreadsheets, Mm. and mark it all up in nine-point font and pass it on (laughs) for updating and then bring it back to the table the next week. And I was consistently frustrated by two things. One, that I was unable to provide that one version of the truth to my clients. Mm -hmm. And two, that there was a real lack of collaboration because we're all sharing the same information more than once. Yeah. And and I guess an awful lot of duplication of work and effort going into it in every single instance, right? That's exactly right. Right. So, so just so I'm really clear, the, the, why do I need, so what's happening in retail tenancy that uh, I'm wanting to find a a, a retail tenant or I'm a a retailer who's looking for a tenancy? Is that, is that where we're talking? Uh, No. So once the Uh, space has been leased, that process of lease to open is the piece where we cover off. So you will have a retail um, leasing agent who will find tenants for spaces. Mm -hmm. The tenancy coordination process is once that deal has been done, we get an instruction and then it's up to us to move forward with that very complex process to manage it until that tenancy can open for trade and start paying rent to the landlords. Okay. And and so you're helping with the fit out and all of those different elements or...? Yeah, yeah. So there's quite a defined process from the moment that that lease has been instructed Mm -hmm. and that is the process of working with the tenant, the tenant's designer, the landlord's retail design manager, the um, services engineers, the structural engineers, the private certifiers, the shop fitters, the operational team. There are, you know, 10 to 15 different types of stakeholders involved in that process. Yeah. So what we do effectively is we're a cog in the wheel and we ensure that everybody keeps moving and everybody has what they need to do their job. Okay, awesome. Because shop fit-outs, they, they cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, don't they? They're, like, really expensive to, to do or they can be. Yeah, and quite often that's really only 30% of the process, Kylie. Right. At least that happens at the end. There's so much that happens before that, before yep. anybody sees any action on site, mm. and that's where the majority of the stakeholders actually sit 
before you know the hammers and the screws all start uh, appearing on site. I guess because you can't even work out what your what you could. Well, I guess you can think about or dream about what you would how you would like this the store to work, but. Mm-hmm. It's, it would be very much tied into the infrastructure inside the building and what's available and what has to connect up. So, yeah, yeah it sounds really complicated. So so when you were in that role and everyone was bringing their nine point, you're lucky it was nine point. I mean, you're lucky it was nine point. I've worked with spreadsheets that were in four point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what, what sort of stuff was going into them? Was that like a a whopping great horrible project management sheet or, or yeah. what were yeah. generally it's a spreadsheet that has all the names of the tenancies down one side yeah and then all the steps that need to go across from left to right and the due dates when they're all due and then the date that they were all completed and then if they were behind any issues that um, may be occurring that are behind so as you can understand that's a very manual process with an excel spreadsheet People actually have to go in and manually update all of the due dates once they change, which Mm. always happens in a real-life project. Yep. Then you have to manually change them. And then when a task is actually completed, you have to manually update that. And then where does that go? It it just kind of sits on a static Excel spreadsheet and provides no real insights to the the, um, property owners. Mm, you, yeah, you can't you can't extract that. It you, well, you only have you have to do it manually, I guess, and and you, it's not feeding back into something else. So, so how big a problem have you got? Some numbers around how how much time or money or effort is wasted in in the traditional way of doing this? Mm. Look, despite the downturn of you know what's happened in twenty twenty, and we can cover that through a whole different topic. Yeah. <laughs> We've covered it ad nauseum, it's fine. <laughs> uh, our, our customers are reporting a really strong future development pipeline mm-hmm. of 20 billion plus across their Australian and New Zealand assets still across the next five years. Mm-hmm. In fact, we're seeing great stories coming about, even though some tenancies are falling over, those retailers with really strong balance sheets aren't just taking one new store they're taking upwards of a hundred yeah across some portfolios Mm -hmm. and that's really good news um given um what the industry went through in 2020 yeah and i look and i imagine that having been through a lot or so much of that pain so far already going forward retailers are looking for every way possible to make their lives less hassle more efficient and and i guess the cost savings that come from that, right? Mm, correct, absolutely. Mm. So, so who are some of your clients? Who, who's using you? So, we work with some of the biggest property owners in Australia. Um, mm-hmm. In South Australia, we work with Adelaide Airport um, across the terminal expansion project that was rolled out um, last year and continues to roll out in the current environment. Um, the uh, Banner Property Group out of Sydney um, mm-hmm. are a really supportive um, customer of ours, as is the Fort Street Capital. Um, we've currently um, just completed a really positive proof of concept um, with another of Australia's largest property owners. Mm-hmm. Um, can't announce that one just yet. Um, That's but okay. It's a real pleasure. Yeah. Um, we can't wait to be able to share that news. Okay, awesome. So, so you used to work in this space. What was the catalyst that made you go, oh, God, I can't do this anymore. I've got to fix it. Mm. You know, the original idea for the concept came from my consultancy. So I started my own company in 2009 where I was providing consulting services to customers like Woolworths and working on some of their South Australian developments. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, based on the positive feedback I was getting about how I approached the process was, okay, how can I scale up my Mm. consulting company? Yep. And that needed a level of automation. And that soon turned into, no, there's a bigger opportunity here to build technology to scale the process, but then provide that to other landlords, retailers, project managers, tenancy coordinators, so that I could have a bigger impact and not purely just on on a consulting perspective. Okay, awesome. It sounds a little bit like the experience of AI assets. So, you know, Wayne Herbert was a was a um, a, a property an asset um, valuer, and the same thing kind of went from doing it himself to building something else that the whole industry could use. 
So, so I guess um, the reason I raise that is because I guess we're seeing a, an increasing number of texts coming out of this space of um, I've got IP, how can I share that IP with more people, not just not just my own clients. So so tell me my understanding by now of what TC Pinpoint does is based on on this idea that you're the the wheel um, or you know or the cog that's keeping all the wheels turning mm-hmm. and what you're not, which is an Excel spreadsheet. What's the experience of all of your different stakeholders when TC pinpoints in play? What, how is it different to the traditional way of doing it okay. in terms of the workflow and, and what they, how does it make their lives easier? Mm-hmm. Well, firstly, we enable them to clarify their workflow. That's the first mm-hmm. step. And then we digitise it. Um, so optimising is always that first step. How do they currently do it? How can we improve it? And then we digitise it which then leads us to automation and then to scale. So it's a really clear four-step process, optimising, digitising, automating and scaling. Mm -hmm. That then leads to that one version of the truth. So we remove all of those blockages, all of those lost pieces of information that sit on people's inboxes um, or some type of document. Back of their head, 3am. Oh, God, I forgot to tell them. Yep. 100%. (laughs) Um, and we're seeing that insofar as our customers leave comments. So we enable task-based communication. Mm-hmm. And that means that when an executive level um, uh, project manager or director has a question, they can jump into a cloud-based system that's available 24-7 and look up comments that have been left. Why is something behind is it somebody, something that a problem can be mitigated? Can we de-risk those problems? Mm-hmm. Um and we're enabling them to enable that, to create that one version of the truth. And transparency is, you know, the number one thing that we need to enable when such a complex process of retail tenancy delivery is in play. Mm. So so what I'm kind of visualising is, is that by being able to sort of share the workflow and make that really transparent, ev- all, everyone can see where you're up to, at what point, what the issues might be coming up down the pipe because of things that are happening in it and everyone's, you know, yeah, that one source of truth, like you said before. Mm. Um, it's very visual, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our vision is to enable property people to be proactive, empathetic and more connected. Mm, I love that vision. That's a great vision. <laughs> Thank you. And, and how... There must be some other benefits that come out of taking this approach to to retail. Um, to I, is it retail onboarding, or what's the what's the right word for it? Well, that lease to open process is really the key part that we yep. play before we start venturing into the asset management side of things, which we're starting mm-hmm. to expand into. But if we focus purely for this purpose on the lease to open process, yep. um, that's really the terminology that makes the most sense to the yep. industry. Yeah. Okay. And as a result of that data collation, people working together on a cloud-based system, the next level of benefit is the analytics that come from that. So yep. what do we do with that data? How can we enable our customers to actually understand what their lease to open process is? Yep. How we can <laughs> enable them to identify any bottlenecks that occur mm-hmm. in that? Because as you can imagine, every day, every week that a retail tenancy isn't open, mm, it's costing you money. Revenue. Yeah, it's lost revenue for the retail mm. landlords, as well as lost experience for other customers coming to a centre. You know, no one wants to see shop fronts hoarded up. They mm. want to see them open and activated and creating value for their communities. Mm. Well, it's a triple whammy, isn't it? Because it's that it's it's that it's it's lost revenue and it's it's costing you money to to be renting the building while it's not while it's not functioning for you. So yeah, okay. And now let's hear a word from our sponsors. For almost 16 years, Direct Connect has made moving easy for over 1.2 million renters and homeowners by arranging connections to a wide range of services, from electricity and gas to internet and pay TV. With a national team of local account managers who are experts in the industry, Direct Connect are there to support your real estate business with competitive rewards for every successful connection, plus an industry-leading rewards program. The connection process is simple and Direct Connect's always on guarantee ensures your customers will be connected on the day they move in. 
Direct Connect offers a range of market-leading suppliers and Direct Connect has now made it even easier than ever to send connections directly integrating with MRI Software's property tree. So in just a few clicks while processing a tenancy, you can send the connection details through and get your customers connected. To make the right connection and find out how Direct Connect can make moving easy for you and easy for your customers, visit agents.directconnect.com.au or call 1300 558 169. So the data that's coming off the back of it, is that is that available then to do something else with afterwards? Or like does that is that able to because you know when you're when you're in this process of doing something new for the first time or building something new, that is often the best time to collect data about what's on the site. Absolutely. Well, yeah. first and foremost, we have to make sure we're collecting the right data Yep. and not dirty data. And that's yep. our key focus. And it takes time, as you would understand when you're building something from nothing. Yep. Um, you've got to make sure that you're collecting the right data. Mm-hmm. And this is what we're currently seeing now is how we're starting to roll that out into really strong analytics for our customers. Um, but to your question, it def- definitely has taken time, but we're so excited for what our roadmap is currently showing about what we're doing in the future with that data. Mm-hmm. So so how long have you been, how long has TC Pinpoint been around for? So we officially launched in 2016. And when mm-hmm. I say that, that is when I registered the business name. Yeah, uh, <laughs> <And> the URL. <laughs> and we uh, launched our MVP in January of 2017 um, yeah. with our first paying customer. Um, but effectively, you know, we're five years in now and we've literally gone from zero products, zero customers, zero money, um, to now working with some of Australia's largest property owners, which is really exciting. Fantastic. Congratulations. And and if every retailer was you or retail business was using TC Pinpoint, how would that, in the next five years, how would the retail space change? Mm. Well, we think there's a level of consistency that's required. Yeah. You know, what actually is happening? What's the level of visibility across mm-hmm. that and I'm not saying you know trying to undo that siloed approach of you know every landlord holding on to their data themselves you know mm-hmm. how is that actually uh, helping the industry as a whole so trying mm-hmm. to remove that siloed nature mm-hmm. um, that's the piece where we think we can add a really strong level of value um, because the consistency in Australia is such a small market mm-hmm. yeah so whilst we're focusing you know on Australia right now um, we've done significant international market exploration um, across the US, India and Singapore. So yep. we are really excited once the borders open and we can start to re-engage on those plans um, to take what we're doing now to other markets. Awesome. Okay. And so do you find that that, that kind of siloed approach to data, do you find that that's changing and do you think it's changing because attitudes are changing or do you think it's changing because now we can see ways of doing it safely? Mm, I think there's a bit of both there, yeah. to be honest. Certainly with the advent of 2020, there is an increased level of understanding of technology because yep. people have had to. Yep. Um, but my opinion still is driven by the value of education. So by virtue of um, being part of the Future Trends and Innovation Committee with the Property Council of Australia, yep. what I really want to bring to that environment is education yeah. because we know that fear comes from a lack of education. Yeah, so true. How can we spread more positive stories, more positive case studies to enable uh, property companies to feel more comfortable with the true idea of innovation Mm-hmm. Innovation being, let's try something brand new that hasn't existed before that might fail. Mm. It might not work in a format. Let's yep. iterate and try again and try again. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that are um, without notice. So, what's the thing that you're most proud of as a founder? Mm. What I'm most f- proud of, you know, I have a screen saver, Kylie, and my screen saver says, Reset, refocus, readjust, restart as many times as you need to. Just never give up. Mm-hmm. 
Awesome. And with all of the challenges that come with building something from nothing, particularly within an industry that is not at the forefront of leading innovation, mm. I'm super proud of, you know, hitting our fifth year. Yep. <laughs> you know, 95% of startups fail in their first year. Yeah. Um, we're revenue creating. We've got a great team around us. We've learned a bunch of lessons that we've gone through, but we've also learned from those lessons and iterated and improved so that we don't make those same mistakes again. Mm. Um, I think that's that's probably the biggest thing, just not giving up and really yeah. firmly believing in the solution to the problem that we're um, solving. And to that point, really being in love with the problem that we're solving. Yes, Yep. Not so much the product. So I love the product and what we're doing, but that's always changing. It needs to consistently change to meet the requests of our customers in the market. Mm. But what I love the most is the problem that we're solving. I love that. Um, and I've never really thought of it that way, but because normally when there's a problem, you're trying to get away from the pain of it. But um, as a founder, I suppose you really do need to love the problem. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you definitely have to love the problem. Otherwise, no. you, you're setting yourself up for, for burnout and exhaustion. Uh, I think. It, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so so, is there a competitive landscape for TC Pinpoint? Mm. Like, or are you, are you guys the only game in town for this? Mm. Look, there's always competitors, right? Number yep, one yep. Is, the, is the attitude of we've always done it this way. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, that old, that old chestnut. It was quite that I can't, um, you know, I can't claim. Um, much what the dinosaur said. Yeah, yeah correct. <laughs> um, look, Excel spreadsheets, email, <laughs> document management. Oh, um, Bill Gates, what did you do? Yeah. <laughs> um, look, there there are some really large enterprise level customers out there that are purporting to try and do. Um, what we are doing, um, that are purporting to do what we're doing, but they certainly don't do it with the efficiencies that we do it, with the agility that we do it, and the economies that we can do it in. Yeah. You know, um, and we hope to share a really positive case story with that theme really soon. Okay. Um, so, yeah, yeah. There's, there's definitely competitors out there. Yeah. And I, I don't want to name them because we don't want to give them no, too don't give them space. Them no. <laughs> um, but suffice to say that we're, there's there's no one within Australia that we've seen doing exactly that we're doing, specifically with the retail tenancy delivery space. Awesome. Okay. And so what – and also you're based out of Adelaide and um, and I'm keen to understand, do you think – has that how has that helped or influenced how – how you've grown or how you've um, how you've evolved. The cost of doing business in Adelaide is incredibly reasonable. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some great prop techs coming out of Adelaide. So I, I mean, you know, and there's lots of stone and chalk. So hello to everybody out in Adelaide. Absolutely, and Hubble being one of those who sits yeah. to us, who recently won a prop tech award. They did. Um, Besides the fact that, you know, you may have read that Adelaide is now the most livable city within Australia, um, mm. but we won't, we won't push that too much. <laughs> Sorry, Melbourne. <laughs> yeah, well, we can give them a little bit of grace right now, huh? Yeah. Um, right. You know, the cost of doing business, um, the potential to have a really strong capacity for, you know, that good old work-life balance piece, um, the fact that we're within... Um, a community like Stone and Chalk within a precinct like Lot 14, mm-hmm. which is receiving global accolades and acknowledgement for what awesome. they're mm-hmm. doing in the entrepreneur space. And we're super proud of being a tenant within that environment. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's the bit that's so exciting because we have to surround ourselves with people that are five steps in front of us mm-hmm. and offer help to those who might be five steps behind us yep, and that creates a strong ecosystem of encouragement and support which then builds that foundation for future success. Mm. And I was talking to Isaac Coonan today from PropTech Brisbane and he's recently, and PropTech Brisbane has recently released the um, Australian PropTech Industry Landscape um, Report 
And I was a little bit shocked because I thought the numbers were a bit higher, but according to that research, there's only about 18% of us in prop tech or founders that are women. What's your advice to women thinking about setting up a prop tech? To just do it. <laughs> the old Nike ad, go. <laughs> don't, don't overthink it. No, true. If you see a problem, have a crack at solving yeah. it. Yeah. And I guess reverting back to the conversation around being within South Australia, we have, uh, we're up to our second um, chief entrepreneur now, um, yeah. Andrew Nunn, um, who just succeeded um, Uwali. Um, there is such a conversation that's happening around that that encourages new ideas and just having a go. Mm. And it's a very layered approach. You know, you can't just jump. You've got to have that financial support and a financial plan that has to be, you know, well documented. But that's not to stop you from trying something on the side, Mm -hmm. dipping your toe in the water, getting out there and having a whole bunch of conversations. I can't emphasise enough the importance of getting out of the building and validating that not only the fact that you think you're providing a solution, but you're actually addressing a problem. Yes. There's a lot of people out there that will um, provide solutions that don't necessarily have a solution. I'm sorry, a problem. Yep. Yeah. So in that regard, um, you've got to do it. You've got to surround yourself with people that um, may well think that you're crazy, but are either supportive by omission, (laughs) a number of those around me, that just say, we believe in you, you do you, do you yeah. um, which is, you know, it speaks my language. That just lets me do my thing on my own terms, um, be calm, which reminds me of, you know, other fantastic um, environments like the CEO network that can provide exactly that, encouraging yeah. you on your own terms. Um, there's loads of other networks I've gone through the the springboard program with SBE Australia, um, the um, NVI's Venture Dawn program, which is like a pre-accelerator program, um, the South Start Accelerator. There's just been a number of really key um, moments and people that I've met along that journey that have stuck. Um, mm-hmm. Plenty of others that have not. So mm-hmm. you've got to be prepared for that as well. Mm-hmm. Lots of other advice and opinions that may not be helpful to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always uh, not compared, but the analogies of start having, growing a startup to having children mm-hmm. is so very similar because you're bombarded with advice, yep. um, but there's only certain pieces that are relevant to you. Um, so I, I, I quite like that analogy. And, you know, just believing in yourself, believing that this is a, a well-experienced problem that you can solve. Yeah, Awesome. Awesome. Um, And look, and the reason I think I was shocked by the number, because I kind of thought it was closer to 30%, is um, the reason I was shocked is that I know all sorts of women working in prop tech or founding prop tech. So I don't know if we're not just putting our hands up to be counted or if when you're, or if we're great at finding each other and connecting up so that we can lift each other up. Um, but I think the moral of that story is don't be frightened because we are out there and we're and we're connected and we're mobilising. <laughs> Absolutely. And look, perhaps there's a layer of there's a layer of truth to the fact that there's what less than two percent of founders that are female that achieve funding. So you know, there's 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 not a lot of good stories around about that. There needs to be more stories that will give. Um, female founders that boost to really forge them forward because, you know, we do need capital, particularly if you're looking at building technology, it's expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look, we are the primary deciders around most things to do with home and properties. So, yeah, absolutely.
If you're a real estate agent, you know you need to do more digital marketing, and that includes creating articles, blogs, emails, and landing pages. But that's a lot to learn, and it can be really hard. So check out ActivePipe. ActivePipe is a specialist digital marketing platform designed especially for real estate agents. It allows you to quickly and easily create engaging emails, including the ability to drag and drop properties into emails that you can send out to buyers, sellers, renters, anyone. ActivePipe Smart Automation allows you to get more leads from your database by understanding the property journey of your contacts and automatically customizing and personalizing emails based on their preferences. And now with the new product, Real Estate Content, you get access to hundreds of stories written about the property market that answer common questions your clients have about how to buy and sell and market performance. So download ActivePipe's free white paper, The Scalable Agent, It's got everything you need to know about how to become a better digital marketer. And it's written by me, Kylie Davis. Go to activepipe.com.au or Google The Scalable Agent. Now, listen, so tell me what's on your roadmap for the next five years? What have you got planned? Mm, I'm so excited about our product. (laughs) That definitely keeps me getting out of bed every morning and continuing to be responsive to our customers' feedbacks, as well as creating our own thought leadership in Mm -hmm. improving the way that tenancy delivery is undertaken in the Australian market. Mm -hmm. I have referred before about, you know, the level of market research that we've done internationally in the US, India and Singapore. And I am looking forward to continuing those activities once those international borders open Mm -hmm. uh, and it's safe safe to do so. Mm, awesome. And what do you think's on the roadmap for retail uh, or for tenancy delivery in retail generally? Like what in things do you see influencing and changing the sector? What I'm most excited about is the uptake of the local community-based version of retail. Yep. Even that our movements have changed, um, the hybrid model of working, which I believe will continue um, is driving that need for locally based amenities. Yep. And by that I mean you know your local, your local neighbourhood centre that might be anchored by a supermarket that's then surrounded by specialty tenancies um, that creates a destination for for local. Uh, yeah. Yep. Communities. I mean, we're seeing some interesting stuff in that space, aren't we? Because I mean, look, we had uh, Dean Katz, Dean from um, Third Place, um, where you know, a, a, a booking platform for if you're wanting to just book a table or some from a restaurant or a cafe in your area, or even a library, or a, you know, to you know, a centralised space where you can, like an Airbnb of of bookings to go and work, and most of those are in a retail precinct. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yep. I think people are really starting to focus in on that. They're wanting to stay closer to home mm. um, and we've got to be respectful of that. Mm. And what that then means for retail tenancy delivery is that we need to do it faster. We need to be collating the appropriate data. We need to be able to accommodate the movement. There might mm-hmm. be shorter term leases. People um, may not want to take a five plus five plus five lease or the associated risk that comes with that, mm-hmm. shorter term leases, one plus one or two years, mm-hmm. um, to enable them to really push and pull and try. There's a number of online operators who are looking at doing, you know, the pop-up environments mm-hmm. to test um, their products in real time as opposed to purely online. Yeah. Um, so there's lots of really exciting things that are happening, and it, it's about being agile um, and flexible and creating the best possible, repeatable, quick, agile process that we can to support that. Mm. And look, I imagine with um, with platforms like yours out there, which makes that whole uh, tenancy delivery much faster and less painful and, and seamless, the idea of in the old days going through that once every five years was probably enough for everybody and like the tenant involved, whereas... Mm. In the new world, if it's not painful, then you can contemplate the idea of doing it, you know, more frequently for shorter leases and things like that because it's it's not such a big deal anymore. 100%. And, yeah. and you know, faster, smooth, smoother, you know, more agile and then effectively making better business decisions based on the data that you're collecting. 
Yeah, awesome. Well, look, Rachel, it's been absolutely fantastic to talk to you. Um, I haven't, I don't, haven't known a lot about re- the retail um, prop tech and retail space. So thank you so much for your patience with me um, while, while we've talked about it. But it's been awesome to hear about TC Pinpoint. Best of luck. My pleasure. Thanks, Kylie. No worries. Thanks. That was Rachel Kidwell, CEO and founder of TC Pinpoint, a prop tech that brings all the different stakeholders in a retail tenancy delivery together and creates transparency and oversight on the multitudes of tasks and pieces of information that are needed to get new stores up and running. As someone who just likes to shop, you probably didn't know everything that was going on in the background. But I wanted to thank Rachel for her patience with me as the intricacies of retail tenancy is all very new. But I do love how we're seeing an emerging group of prop techs that while based on really niche areas, those niches are experiencing a lot of pain. AI Assets is another prop tech that comes to mind that's doing something similar. And so does Forbury and Tell Frankie in the industrial space. What we're seeing with these prop techs is that they're solving problems that were once described to me as being an inch wide and a mile deep. I was told that by a really well-known US venture capitalist that this was his secret to finding great tech. It was what he looked for in his investments because it meant that the prop tech had domain expertise, it meant they could focus on solving specific problems and that doing that was quite easy to cost out and also to resource. And those prop techs had more exit options open to them because they could also be purchase targets, unlike broad and wide techs, which have issues with funding everything that they want to do to grow and inevitably are only relying on an IPO to exit. So if you're thinking about starting a prop tech, embrace the niches and look for the problems that you can solve that are an inch wide and a mile deep. But what I specifically loved about this interview was Rachel's explanation that she was in love with the problems that her tech is trying to solve, not the product itself. And I think this is a fabulous perspective. Love the problem. When you love the problem rather than the product, you're always looking for new ways to get right to the heart of the issue, not to just add the next widget. When I think back to all the interviews we've done on the PropTech podcast over the past 18 months, I can see that those who impressed me the most and who had the strongest tech were those who'd been in love with the problem, not with their own product. And that's something to think about. Now, if you have enjoyed this episode of the PropTech podcast, I would love you to tell your friends or drop me a line either via email, LinkedIn or Facebook. You can follow this podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor and Apple iTunes. I'd like to thank my audio support, Charlie Hollands and the fabulous Jill Escudero and our sponsors, Direct Connect, Making Moving Easy, Smidge, Official Wines of the PropTech community and Home Prezzo, now part of Active Pipe and making marketing automation easier than ever before. Now, do you run a prop tech business or are you the founder of a prop tech? Make sure you join the Prop Tech Association. It's Australia's not-for-profit association made up of tech people who are passionate about the property industry and committed to improving experiences in how we buy, sell, rent, manage, build and finance property. Joining will give you access to events and networks across Australia and globally that will help you promote and grow your business. Go to proptechassociation.com.au forward slash membership. Thanks everyone. Until next time, keep on prop checking. <laughs>